So good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to work on our Excel skills about reading word problems and translating that into an algebraic problem so we can solve it. So there are two skills that we're going to work on today. We're going to work on super basic ones and then writing equation ones. So the first one you guys will have for Excel, it's going to be pretty easy. It's almost like me just asking you a word problem verbally, okay? And we'll see how it goes. I'm going to work with it with you guys. So. <clears throat> So here's our first problem. It says, and remember all these word problems are just straight made up, right? So Dover Middle School, sorry, something just came in, the tenants. Dover Middle School spent $11 per workbook for every workbook it buys. How much would it cost Dover Middle School to buy a total of two workbooks? Okay. If each workbook is eleven dollars, and they were going to buy two workbooks, how much is this going to be? And of course, you guys can probably say eleven dollars. You guys are this eleven dollars, easy peasy. But I want you guys to look at this a little bit algebraically. We're going to write a formula for this. So if it's eleven dollars per workbook, I'm going to say this is eleven times x because x is the number of workbooks. Okay. So we have a value that we're going to attribute for every workbook we buy. And then this will give us our total y. I want to say y is our total. Okay. Of course, you can say 11 times 2 is 22. Great. But I want you guys to look at this a little bit more algebraically, where we're going to think of this as writing an equation. And this will help us transition to writing uh, larger equations. So $11, again, is how much I pay per workbook. How many workbooks are you going to buy? I don't know. Right. Starting from this first equation. How many workbooks are we going to buy? I don't know. So I'm going to call that variable x, and this will lead us to our total uh, amount of money I'm going to spend. In the second sentence, he said, told us we're going to have to buy how many workbooks? Two. So if x equals to two, right, because x was the number of workbooks, 11 times 2 is equal to 22. But what if in an alternate world, what if I said, Dover needs to buy a lot more workbooks than, than two. What if they had to buy 22 of them? Does that change our equation at all? Well, if the book workbooks each cost $11 and now we have to buy 22 of them, hey, we just have to do the math now. This is $242. Okay. So our idea is that we can make things into equations to generalize them. So we get it, it works for one situation, but how can we generalize it so it works for all my situations? Okay. So we have a, we introduce the variable x, and we have to label what x is. x is the number of workbooks, and y, our answer, is going to be our total. Okay, let's go back. So we said our answer was going to be 11. Oops. Hmm. Bring up the keyboard. Oh my gosh, 22. It was 22, right? My bad. Right, it was 22. I don't know why I wrote 11. But yeah, it was 22, and that's what we got before. Okay, let's do the next problem. This one looks like a little, it might be a little bit more wordy, right? Eddie already had already read 12 books this year before joining the book club, and he plans to read one book every month now that he has joined. Okay, after belonging to the book club for 11 months, how many books will Eddie have read in all? So let's go ahead and set up some general ideas here. First, Eddie has already read 12 books this year. He already read 12. That's not going to change. And then he plans to read one book per month. <clears throat> so how many books has he read at the end of the year? Wait, so oh, how many books has he read total? So we're going to say our X here is going to be months. How do I know it's going to be months? Because this is for every month. So if you join the book club for two months, it's going to be one times two. If you join for three months, it'll be one times three, because he's only reading one book a month. And he's already read 12 books already. So 12 plus one times x, that was right, one x, equals y. And y is going to be our total books. He's read while in book club. 
So after uh, belonging to the book club for 11 months, how many books uh, will Eddie have read in all? So our X was our number of months. I don't know why, well, monthly. Months. So we're going to say 12 plus 1 times 11 is going to be our total. And 12 plus 11 is 23. So he read 23 books. Now, what if I change this to instead of one book a month, I wrote three books a month. What if he wrote th read three books a month? So the equation would be on the side. Let's write this a little differently on the side. He read 12 books already. Oops, let me get a little thicker. He wrote 12, he read 12 books already. And then every month he reads three books per month. And that would change our equation. And what happens again, we're generalizing this idea by reading this word problem. Now why are word problems important? One is, sure there's reading involved, but more importantly, I like to think of it this way, and I feel like this is more applicable to you guys. In the real world, your bosses are going to be speaking to you in English. They're going to give you word problems. And what happens, you have to translate that into a math problem in your head. If you were a boss, you're not going to give people this equation. That's not what you do. right? That's not what you do. You're just going to verbalize it. Hey, if you read 12 books, and if you're going to read one more book a month, after 11 months, how many books did you read? That's a word problem. But that's also a situation problem. And in the real world, we don't deal with equations like this. We deal with word problems. And then we change that into some type of equation where we can generalize, so we can manage. Okay, so we said our answer is going to be 23. I'll try not to make that mistake this time. All right, super. All right, let's look at the next problem. Okay. Arby's retirement party. Is it Arby's? Abby's. Abby's retirement party. You can think of what, you can realize what's going on in my head. Abby's retirement party costs $7 for every guest she invites. What is the maximum number of guests there can be if Abby can afford to spend a total of $42 for a retirement party? So this one actually gave us the total that she can spend. Okay, so Abby's retirement costs $7 per guest. So $7 per guest. I don't know how many guests I'm going to invite. But I know that the maximum numbers, uh, the maximum amount I can spend is $42. So this is uh, taking us back to another algebraic problem. And you can start guessing. You can say, what if she only invited one guest? What if she invited only two guests? And you could count your way up. And this is not a wrong method. This is actually, an, no, it's perfectly fine, but it just takes too much time. And we can see that that was going to be six guess. So instead, we're going to solve it using algebra, like we talked about before, solving for x. 42 divided by 7 is going to be 6. She can invite at most six, six people to a retirement party. So our goal here is to be able to write this algebraic expression, this equation, right, because it's an equal sign now, and we can then use that to solve as a helpful tool. You could have also said, I don't know, that's Abby's problem. But you know what? These problems are originally going to be your problem. And getting ourselves out of the box, trying something new, All right? Okay, so remember, I'm going to record this, so if you guys need to go back and look at these problems, um, totally feel free to do so, and this will be posted on the homework. It says she can invite six guests. Okay, let's do this next problem. Okay, Sean, Shauna already owns 12 necklaces. Okay, that's important for us. She already owns 12. And uh, an additional necklace are priced at one dollar, one for a dollar. Wow, at one for a dollar. Wow. How much money does Shauna need to spend on new necklaces in order to only total 42 necklaces? Oh my goodness. Okay, so she already owns 12 necklaces. She needs, she wants a total of 44 necklaces. How much money will she have to spend? Okay, so I think this is almost like a two-part problem. So 
So first, let's figure out. She has already 12 necklaces. She wants to buy more necklaces so that she can have 44 necklaces. How do you guys feel about that? She has 12 necklaces already. And then she has to buy more to get a total of 44 necklaces. Okay, so that's minus 12 to both sides. She needs to buy a total of 32 necklaces still. Right? And you could have done that without algebra, right? But I think writing it out, and as systems get more, more difficult, more confusing, definitely it will be helpful. Okay, so let's go continue with this. Um, now, she said that each of her necklaces are priced only for a dollar. One for a dollar. That's super cheap. So since she has to buy 32 necklaces, she's going to spend $32. So I'm going to keep doing these for a, a little longer, just so you guys get um, a nice set of equations, a set of problems that you guys can go to refer back to. Alright, so Kaylee takes two pages of notes during each hour of class. Okay, so two pages of notes for each hour of class. I can highlight that. Two pages of notes for each hour of class. After attending four hours of class, how many total pages of notes will Kaylee have in her notebook? You could probably say, okay. If she took two pages of notes per hour, so in the first hour, she took two. In the second hour, she, that's becomes four. If she took notes for, whoops, three hours, that would be six. And if she took notes for four hours, that would be eight. You could do that. That's perfectly fine. We could walk it up. You can say, okay, one, two, three, four. So he took notes. She took notes for the first hour, that's two, 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 right? For the first hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour of notes, that's a total of eight pages. There are a lot of ways that we can visually do this. But again, whenever we see the word um, for each, that's, that's a variable problem. Two times x is equal to y, where y is the total number of pages. And x is the number of hours. So now we have a general situation that we can use for any set of hours. So in this case, she, she took notes for 4 hours. So 2 times 4 is 8. We plug in the number of hours and we got the number of pages. But what if we're talking about the whole week? What if she had 32 hours of, of notes? Well, that's a lot of notes. So 2 times 32 would give us 64. And our generalized equation allows us to find out whatever we want. We're not just stuck with one answer anymore. We, and we don't have to count up. We don't have to draw a picture to count up. And I think algebra allows us to save us ourselves actually a lot more time. Okay, so our answer is going to be 8. Let's go ahead and, and write that 8. Okay, so I'm going to jump a little further onto the road here. Let's take a look at that next level set of problems. Okay, a carpet cleaner charges $66 to travel to a customer's home and $16 per room cleaned. If a carpet cleaner charged $98, how many rooms did he clean? This is the idea of working backwards, right? They gave us a total and we want to figure out how many rooms. We can want to work backwards here. So we know for sure, if he goes to your house, he's going to at least charge you $66. So that is a constant, and that's a word that we're going to use, constant. That's not going to change. And then he changes um, each, he charges $16 per room. Now the variable is how many rooms are they going to wash? So every house is a little different. But first we know for sure we're going to end up paying $66 in addition to $16 per room. And we're going to call it 16x is equal to y. So I want you guys to be able to go through these IXL problems because the next couple of days we are going to be working with solving equations and looking at word problems. They're going to give us a word problems that we're going to have to translate into algebraic equations so that we can do this system of equation solving. 
whether elimination, substitution, or even graphing. Okay, so that, since we have our equation, if we make sense, if I only had one room, it'd be sixteen dollars plus the sixty-six. If I had two rooms, this would be thirty-two dollars. Two times sixteen is thirty-two dollars, and then plus the sixty-six. And again, this is something that that regular um, carpet cleaners kind of charge. That's how they run their business. Yeah. Okay, so carpet cleaner they eventually charge ninety-eight dollars. So let's fill that in. This is gonna be ninety-eight. Is equal to 66 plus 16x. And some of you guys can probably guess it's going to be 2 already. You guys can probably guess that. But now let's go ahead and do it algebraically. Okay, 98 minus 66 is 32. Now we can divide both sides by 32. So, sorry, by 16. I'm sorry, by 16. x is equal to 2. So we know how many rooms they clean. How do you get better at word problems? You just you just start doing them, and we we scaffold. We do easier ones, so you understand when do you add, when do you subtract, when do you write the variable, and we work work from there. Okay, so there's gonna be two rooms. Oh, didn't even read that. I'm right this way. Oh, that's a Q. <laughs> so funny. Okay, let's go ahead and do this, do this next problem. Jane has already taken seven pictures at home, and she expects to take one picture during every day of vacation. How many days will Jane have to spend on vacation before she will have taken 18 pictures? Okay, so Jane already has seven pictures. She takes one for every day of vacation and then in the end she has 18 pictures all right so we know she already has seven plus she's going to take one per every day of vacation and then let's give us our total pictures in our certain case she has seven pictures she's going to take a bunch and she's going to have a total of 18 at the end okay why is our total pictures X is not our number of pictures. X is the day of vacation. Okay, and now this leads us to another algebra problem. Minus 7 to both sides. X is equal to, that's a 1X. I'm just leave it as X. It's going to be um, 11. So she needs to be on 11 more days of vacation. Okay, let's see if this gets any harder. Okay, let's jump through our last type of question in this case. Okay. Renan. I think. Renan has already cycled 368 kilometers this year. Plus, he plans to cycle one kilometer during each trip of work. Oh my gosh. Okay. How many trips will um, Renan have to make uh, to cycle a total of 556 kilometers? Okay. So they, he's already, he's already uh, cycled 368 kilometers. And then he's going to do one day, one kilometer per day. And then we will have a total here. They give us a total of to be 556. So 368 plus 1x is equal to 558 or 556 here. And then we get to solve for x. Okay, so minus 368 minus 368. 1x is equal to uh, carry the 1. That's going to be an 8. That's a 4. Carry the 1. 14 will be um, 8 again. 4 and 1 be 1. 100. So he needs, to cycle, he needs to go on 188 more trips for work. This guy is busy. He goes on a lot of trips with his bike. Okay. Alright. 
So let's go ahead and go into the next section I have for you today. And that is S.13. Okay, so these will be a little bit more difficult. I have a smart score up to 70. The first ones are going to be pretty easy. That's up to 90. And the second one's going to be a little bit more, um, slightly more difficult. Okay. Okay, so Stephen has already walked two kilometers this week. Plus, he plans to walk seven kilometers during each trip of school. So this sounds very similar to our last one, right? There's already a number that we started off with. And then a number that we're going to add for every trip. Uh, write the equation that shows the relationship between the number of trips, t, t, and the number of distance walked. Okay, So we have two kilometers that he started off with. And he's going to do seven kilometers during each school trip. All right, so let's get started. We have two kilometers. Stephen already walked two kilometers. Plus, for every school trip, he's going to walk seven kilometers. How many school trips? We, we don't know. And we call that the letter t. And this is going to equal to the total distance walked, right? Two original plus the change. That's going to give us a total of D. And this is what the Zags I want you to do. Just write out this equation. And let's go ahead and try it. Two plus seven TD. I start off with two already. I'm going to add seven per trip. And the letter they want me to use is T. And this is equal to D for distance. Okay, let's take a look. Oh my goodness. So if you take a look at the problem with the way I wrote it, I didn't write anything wrong. But they specifically, I didn't read the follow-up question. But it says write the equation, right, right here, right here, right here. Let me show you guys. It says, write your answer as an equation with D first followed by an equal sign. Okay, So if you guys are getting the same mistake that I've just demonstrated, is that you need to read how they want you to write it. And they, in this case, they want us to write D first. So if I wrote D first and then an equal sign, I probably would have been in good shape. But I didn't follow the directions, did I? Okay. So let's try this again. All right, let's go ahead and see. yes, I got it. You got it. Okay, let's try this again. A person can pay $7 for a membership to an art museum and then go to the museum for just $2 per visit. Write an equation that shows the relationship between the number of visits and the total cost. So this is very similar to what we did before. So they have to pay $7 first and then they pay $2 per visit. And the letter they want us to use for visits is V and the total cost C. And let's write the C in front this time. So the total cost is equal to $7 initial. It's like a membership fee. And then you have to pay $2 for every visit. How many visits are you going to do? I don't know. And that's where that variable comes into play. It can change. And that's why we use the word variable because it's not constant. It can change. Okay, 7 plus 2V. Let's go ahead and see if this, is, this will work. I'm going to purposely write the V in the back this time. Let's see if it gives us this right answer. 7, oh wait, whoops. We have to write the C first, right? C equals, C equals, we said 7 plus 2 V. Okay, so I purposely wrote it in a backwards order. Let's see if this will take it. It did accept it. All right. So as long as we have the variable and equals in the front, we're in good shape. Again, write your, let me read the directions here. It says write your answer as an equation with the a first followed by equation sign. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. Tommy already knew two appetizer recipes before starting culinary school. He will learn two new appetizer recipes during each week of school. Write the equation that would follow. Sure. He start off with two equations or two recipes. He's going to add two more for every week. And the variables they want us to use is W for weeks and the total number of appetizer recipes as A. So 2W 
is equal to a total of 8. Now, does this make sense? You start off with 2. He's going to add 2 per week. So if he was in the school for 2 weeks, 4 weeks, 5 weeks, 10 weeks, uh, whatever number of weeks that may be, um, we can add those together to end up with the total. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and answer that. We said the letter is going to be A. Darn it. Okay, we're going to say two. No, the letter we're going to start with the letter first, A. For all those recipes, A is equal to, uh, he started off with two recipes and he's going to add two per week. Okay, let's go ahead and jump up a little bit. A, a cab company charges $2 per cab ride plus $2 per every mile. Write the re equation that shows the relationship between the distance D and C. This is exactly the same thing we just did last, last one, except the other words used recipes instead. But these formats we realize are very similar and they'll start repeating. If I charge $2 for the cab ride plus $2 for every mile, and they, they use the word D for distance, this gives us our total cost for the cab ride. Okay. We start off with two miles, two dollars, right? Just for hopping in the cab, and then we're going to add two dollars per mile. And this is, if you guys ever taken a taxi, this is how they charge you. You guys don't really see that for Uber and Lyft these days. They just kind of give you a flat rate. But Uber and Lyft follow this similar formula, where they charge you for getting in and they charge you per mile and distance. They also calculate um, the time of it, time of the day it is, and if it's trafficy or not trafficy. Um, if it's busy, like are there a lot of people grabbing lifts or are there not a lot of people grabbing lifts? So they charge you a premium during that, those times too. So their formula, of course, is a little more expensive than just a simple cat, taxi cab. Okay. okay. So the only thing I want to make sure is I don't mess up the variables. So we start off with start off with the letter uh, C for cost, total cost. And that's equal to the two dollars initial plus my two dollars per mile and that's 2d all right okay so let's go ahead and try writing this um just by reading it and we'll see if it's, it's pretty easy now judy already knows nine appetizer recipes before starting culinary school and she will learn four new appetizer recipes during each week okay she's going to learn four more during each week write an equation that shows the relationship between the number of weeks, W, and the number of appetizer recipes, A. So we know A is a total number of appetizer recipes, so let's start off with A, is equal to, now, could you just come up with the equation pretty fairly easily now? She already knew 9, and she's learning 4 per week. She already knew 9, and she's going to learn, she's going to add to her knowledge, when going to add 4 more recipes for a week. So 4, and then we use the word letter um, w. Okay. So I want you guys to make sure you guys are practicing these so you can get this out. Okay. Let's jump into a level of difficulty. This is the last difficulty level we'll, we'll be working at. So Helen has already written 29 pages and she expects to write two pages for every additional hour spent writing. How many hours will Helen have to spend writing this week in order to have a total of 43 pages. All right, and solve an equation finding the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We have 29 pages that we started off with. She writes two recipes, per, uh, two, um, she writes two pages per uh, hour. Let's use a T for time. And then this is gonna give us our total um, pages. We'll use P for pages. But they gave us a hint. They want us to say, hey, you know what? She finished 43 pages. So 29 plus 2 per hour gave us a total of 43 pages total. Well, let's figure out how, what our T value is. So this takes us back to our first days of Algebra 1. And we're just solving for the variable. And we're going to borrow 1. That's 4. That's 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So 14. I'm going to divide those by 2 on both sides. T is equal to 7. Took her 7 hours. And let's see if that worked. She started at 29, and after one hour, she has 31. 
And after two hours, after three hours, after four hours, after five hours, after six hours, after seven hours, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two. So it's 29 plus 14. That gives us 30, 43 pages. So this is a kind of a long way of, of doing it, but this is the idea of if we were counting with our fingers. Okay, so we have seven hours of work. Okay, I think that's it for today. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you guys need to refer back to this video, this video will be posted.